I'm Vanessa Rock, the girl on a bike, and today I am going to be talking about the BMW GS. I have finally succumbed. I've hired a couple of GSs that are behind me from Moto Hire Spain down near Malaga in the south of Spain. And today I'm going to be talking about what I like, what I don't like, and a key comparison between the 850 and the 1250. I'm currently just next to Sara de Sierra in south of Spain. Now this is roughly about a thousand kilometer road trip so far. So if you've watched my videos before, you'll know that I'm not gonna give you any thoughts or opinions on a motorcycle until I put my bum in the seat for long enough to feel like I'm credible to have an opinion. Now I've got the F850 GS and the 1250 GS here. I've spent a little bit of time on both of them as we've gone on a beautiful road trip around Southern Spain. Now these these bikes are for hire and if you fancy flying into Spain and having a go on a GS maybe just because you want to explore southern Spain maybe because you're tempted by a GS and wonder which one to get so want to have some seat time then Moto Hire Spain is a really really good option I've flown down with a girlfriend and we're just having a bit of an adventure now a little bit of my riding history when it comes to adventure bikes I have ridden quite a few of the rivals now and I've had a lot of you pestering me to be like what about the GS and so I have cracked and I'm here and I'm riding the GS and it's finally time for me to give you my opinion on the GS. Now there is one really, really, really critical thing that I'm going to have to tell you about this bike where I just think it's massively failing as an offering in the BMW GS space. And I'm gonna tell you that later on in the video, so stay tuned. As far as other adventure bikes that I've ridden, if you're interested to see some of the comparison, my thoughts on some of the others, there's loads of different videos on my channel. So I've ridden the Africa Twin, both in UK mud, but also out in Iceland. I've been on the Yamaha Tenere 700, the T7 in Sardinia, where I've done a full lap of the Island. I've been on the Pan America in Wales. I've ridden it across Europe. I've been actually on a GS once before in the UK going down to Devon and there's a pretty hilarious scene where I completely soaked my mum going through a Ford. Worth a giggle of a watch. Uh, what other ones have I ridden? I've been on KTMs over at Sweet Lamb in North Wales. I've been on the Ducati Multistrada at Adventure Bike Festival. What other adventure bikes have I been on? I'm thinking, oh, the Triumph Tiger. Of course, I've ridden the, the Tiger. I rode the 800 in Bolivia. I've ridden the 900 from Wales all the way down to Africa and done a seven day desert rally, thousand dunas. Absolutely brutal. But you get the idea that I have ridden quite a few of the different adventure bikes that are out there on the market. And so feel like I'm allowed to have an opinion on what I like and don't like. So I've got the two Jesses right here. Let's get into some of the details. First of all, then we have the GS 1250. This is the Bentley of adventure bikes. Like it really is. It's massive, it's smooth, it's comfortable. It's got big fairings. And then we have the 850, which is kind of like the baby brother. But the problem is I don't really think it is the baby brother. There are some massive differences in these two bikes, which I'm going to talk through that makes me feel like that is just a totally different species of motorcycle compared to the GS. So let's focus on, which one should we focus on first? I'm torn. I actually don't know, I'm totally slung. Okay, let's start, let's start with the black, the black beast, because I'm stood next to it. So, so the 1250 GS, the first most important thing to mention is the engine that's inside. So this is a boxer engine. It's a horizontally opposed, the classic boxer that we love and know from BMW. Now the first boxer engine I ever rode a couple of years ago, you got on it and you started it up. And because of the way the pistons and the configuration of that boxer goes, it gives you like this little sideways wiggle, which kind of is a bit spooky the first time you stop at a, a traffic lights and you feel it. It's amazing how much they have balanced and stabilized it. It doesn't have the quite the same wiggle anymore, but you still get the characteristic of the pull. A really important thing about the engine in this 1250. So the camshift technology in this bike, I honestly think is probably the key reason why the GS just feels 
feels so beautiful and unique in its power delivery. The camshift technology means that there is a variable valve timing. There are two cam loads per intake valve and an actuator that selects between the two. This means that the bike can switch between the different cam lobes depending on your RPM. There's one for low RPMs, one for high RPMs. And overall, that's gonna mean a much smoother and higher performance delivery across the rev window of the motorcycle. And you feel it pretty much immediately when you get onto this bike. Now, when you think about the fact that it is a massive 1250 engine, it's got 136 horsepower, 143 foot-pounds of torque. That's a colossal amount of torque in a motorcycle. And that's because of the sheer size of the pistons and the bore. I believe the bore is 102.5 with a 76 millimeter stroke. There is power in this bike and it's always there ready to go. Whether you're loaded up with panniers, a passenger, you're never going to feel underpowered on this motorcycle. That's pretty much guaranteed. And that's a slightly different picture when you look to the little brother 850. Comparing that to the 850 engine, this is not actually the boxer engine that so many know and love. This is a parallel twin. It's got four valves per cylinder. It is not gonna give you anywhere of the same shift cam, all of the stuff that we just talked about on the 1250. And when you get on this bike, it does feel and behave very differently. It has 843, I believe, capacity engine which is 400 less than the 1250. Now, if you've seen my previous videos before, particularly talking about the Tiger 900 versus the bigger 1200 adventure bikes, you'll realize that power and size isn't always everything. There's a whole relationship between the size of the bike, the weight, the seat height, all of that kind of confidence. This bike really is delivering you a lot less power than that. I think we're looking at more like 90 horsepower and you feel it when you drive it. When you want to go for an overtake, where you want to pull away sportily from a roundabout, there is a lot less oomph in that throttle and you feel it. Now that can be a good thing because maybe you're going to be less likely to get yourself into a little bit of trouble if you're a younger, less confident rider, but it could mean that the overtakes are a little bit less fun. Very different engines in the two bikes. Another big difference is the shaft drive versus the train drive. Now, there's a lot of personal preference on what you prefer to run. The 1250 is a shaft drive. The disadvantage is it tends to be slightly heavier as a system on a motorcycle, but the maintenance is dramatically lower. You don't have to worry about lubing your chain, checking your chain tension. They tend to need to be oiled, serviced every 12,000-ish miles. Is recommended to put a little bit of lube on them a bit more frequently but that's down to your service manual but the everyday maintenance worry of having the shaft drive is easier than having a chain drive the chain drive is a slightly lighter system you do then have to have the maintenance of the chain but it gives you the advantage that should you want to change your gear ratios you can it's kind of a personal preference which one you prefer I'm just telling you that this has a chain and this has a camshaft. Now I mentioned weight just then, so it's probably worth talking about the weight side of things. Now a 1250 versus an 850, quite naturally, there is a bit of a weight difference, but actually the weight difference is dramatically smaller than I expected when I looked into the spec sheet. And even more surprisingly was how that weight actually feels when you get onto the motorcycles. So with the different style engines and the shape of the bikes, that also factors into the weight of the bike. The 850 is coming in at 223 kilograms, whereas the 1250 is coming in at 243 kilograms. So if you've got quick maths, you will know that that's 20 kilograms difference. But I don't think this bike feels 20 kilos heavier. I actually feel as though the 850 has a slightly higher center of weight, which means it almost feels the same weight, maybe heavier in different situations. Now the seat height and things we're gonna get onto, but having a bike that feels heavier just because of the weights higher is as disadvantaged as having a bike that actually is heavier. So the weight of the motorcycle isn't the only thing. When you come to drop a motorcycle, and I said when and not if, because sadly most of us will drop a motorcycle at some point, particularly if you're adventuring and going off road, 
But the boxer engine gives you a pretty big advantage when you do drop this bike. Now, because of the way the boxer stands out, it's two inches wider as a motorcycle than this one, which doesn't have the boxer engine. It basically means that when it falls over, it kind of just leans and sits onto the engine. It's got massive frames and guards, so you're not worrying about that happening. But it means that when you then pick it up, you haven't got to pick it up anywhere near as far, which makes it feel lighter. Whereas this bike, when you drop it, can fall right over. So. You've got less weight, but you've got more of a lift. 20 kilos isn't that much in the scheme of 250 kilos. Now, if you were talking about it in the scheme of me, it's a third of my body weight, but in a motorcycle, it's not too catastrophic. So are the advantages of the rest of the bike being smaller worth the compromise when it comes to the other things? Now, your bum on the seat is a really important one. So the best thing you can do is get out and give one of these bikes a try and see how it feels. My butt thinks this seat is really pretty comfortable. It's big, it's soft, it's squidgy. This seat makes my bum sore very, very quickly. It's hard, it's not got as nice a material on it. So the seat comfort is a really important part. When you then take your body position on the bike as well, I find that this bike with its harder grips it's quite a small framed position for my body. Whereas when I get on the 1250, I find it a lot more comfortable. There's something about the, the comfort of the seat, the fact that you've got a lovely backstop for the back of your body position. If you sit back, you can sit forward. It's got softer grips and a slightly more open riding body position. You've got the advantage in wet and cold conditions as well, where you've got much more protection from that boxer engine and the side of the fairings, which means you are going to have a lot less riding fatigue, wind, water, cold on your body. In the heat, like here in Malaga, where I think actually it's 38 degrees right now, it does make you a little bit warmer because you're not getting the airflow. Again, it depends where you're riding, what, what is going to be more advantageous. I'm just trying to give you some of the things from experiencing this bike this week that might help you with your N plus one purchasing decision of what motorcycle to have in your garage. Okay, seat height while I'm sat on the bike is another one. So let's stand him upright. I am 169 centimeters tall with a 69 centimeter inside leg. And I'm very comfortably on the ball of my feet on both sides. I cannot flat foot, but I'm comfortably on the ball of the feet. This seat does have a couple of different options available from BMW as far as the seat. And you can, of course, always go for an aftermarket seat. So for example, on one of my bikes at home, I got Coalfield Leather to do a custom seat. You give them their seat, they'll scoop them out lower, put loads of memory foam and lovely gel stuff and make a really comfortable seat that's lower as well. You've also got the suspension options should you want it to be shorter. And if you're a slightly taller person, you can, of course, raise the seat and give your body a little bit more uh, range. When we then come over to the 850, I will do the same thing, stand him upright. I have got a flat foot just on this bike. So with a straight leg, I've got a flat foot. So this bike is coming in slightly lower at the moment. We do have a lower seat position set up on this bike compared to that one. If we quickly look at the stats on the bike, we have an 860 seat height, this one. We have a different seat on it right now, hence why I was able to reach the ground. But on the 1250, you've got an 850 to 870 seat height range. But again, as I've said, there's so many aftermarket options or modification options for your seat height. It's less of a worry. The key thing is that for me, with a 69 centimeter inside leg, it's a really accessible big bike. I can reach the ground quite easily on both of them. It's probably worth talking about some of the technology in these bikes. They both have big, amazing headlights. They've got rider modes. The 850 has two, just the road and the rain, whereas the 1250 has considerably more options when it comes into the riding mode, including a dynamic mode, a rain mode, an eco mode for having a slightly better fuel consumption. 
you've got some additional advantages with quick shifters, cruise control. For me, when you're racking up big miles touring, it's incredible how much of a fatigue decrease you get from having a cruise control. And the 850 doesn't come with some of these more luxurious extras as such. You've got the hill start assist. You can read, of course, the spec sheet on the website. I'm not gonna go through every single detail. And the key thing here is that with a 1250, you're spending more money and you're definitely getting more as far as the comfort, the technology that is in that bike for your money. Coming into the front tires here, we can see a pretty obvious difference. So we have a 19 inch and a 21 inch front wheel. We've got spokes and we've got rims. Now, when you're going into an off-road environment, you typically are better off being on a spoked wheel. And when you're on a road environment, you naturally see more of the rims. The size of the wheel also has a big impact on that. The bigger the wheel, the bigger the circumference and the easier that wheel is going to go over rocks and smooth things out and suck up the terrain. So the 850 does have a bit of an advantage when it comes to that initial idea of going off-road. Now, typically, when you look at the tyre market in the off-road world as well, you've got a lot more options when you're looking at a 21-inch front tyre versus the 19. So that's something Thing worth thinking about. Now at the moment we're running Michelin on both of these tiles. We have the Anarchy Adventure on the 1250. It's a fantastic tire to give you a bit of durability but it's massively more on the road focus side. One of my favorite tires for an adventure bike off-road is the Anarchy Wild which is kind of like the muddy big brother to this tire. At no point this week with either of these tires have I felt like they weren't there, they weren't gripping. They've been a fantastic option here in Spain. We've got brakes. Now the brakes on paper aren't too different. They've got Brembo's, they've got two discs, dual calipers, uh, four pistons, but the braking feel that you get riding them is dramatically more impressive on the 1250. It gives you a lot more confidence when you go into brake and it does have an additional piston on the rear. So potentially that could be where that variation is coming in. Again, I'm just trying to give you what it feels like for me being out here on these bikes. When I've had to suddenly stop, I was a little bit less of a woohoo on this bike than that one. While we are here, the front suspension is definitely worth mentioning as well. So I was at Baffle House in South Wales just a week ago grabbing a coffee and I'm sat there and this guy comes in on his adventure bike. I think he was on a Africa Twin. He's pulling in slowly to stop. And as he does it, he pulls his front brake. We've all done it at some point, I'm sure. Pulling the front brake, compresses the front suspension. He then bounced and he dropped his bike right there in front of everyone in the cafe. Probably died a little bit inside, but the key thing I'm sort of, why I'm saying this is because the 1250 has a telelever front suspension system, which prevents that from being a problem. So the, in a nutshell, you can read the technical scientific specs on the website. This telelever front suspension is going to prevent that front nose dive from happening. So say you're cruising on the motorway, you suddenly pull your front brake slow down. It's not going to give you a suspension nose dive. When you're pulling up in a cafe, in a petrol station, again, that risk of the front brake giving you a little bit of a spit out is completely removed. The 850 doesn't have that suspension technology. Both of them do have electronic suspension adjustments, which happens automatically. So the dampening is changed itself. For example, if you suddenly throw on a pillion, not that you'd throw them, carefully invite a pillion on the back or put a load of luggage on, the suspension will automatically adjust the dampening to compensate for that, which I think is a really, really cool feature because it's gonna give you the best ride without you having to do anything on suspension settings. Luggage wise, I would say these two bikes are completely on par. We have the BMW hard shells on there at the moment. They expand slightly to give you a little bit more space uh, and they're lockable. They're quite easily removable. I'm not going to open it because the Vanessa bomb will happen. Um, I decided to bring some Moscow kit with me as well because I'm a massive fan of the Moscow kit. I didn't really want to have a top box. I'm not going to say they're hideous, but I just don't really personally like 
top boxes. So I bought the, the Moscow rucksack, which I've decided to put on the back of the bike into the center of the rackless system. And that just means that I don't get a sweaty back riding along in the 42 degrees heat that we've had this week in Malaga. Uh, that's a really nice system. I've also got my nipple here to have some water. I've got a tank bag on the front. This is a little Moscow one. I like it because it's nice and small. If I'm doing border crossings across Europe, my passport, phone. At the moment, I have a charger in there. The bike has a USB connector as standard, but I like to use a USB-C fast charge for my phone, so I've just got a little power block. I've put my Peak Design phone mount on there so that I can navigate with that. Now, both of these bikes do have either come with or have the option of the six inch TFT display, which has full Google Maps interactivity. I'm just so used to using my iPhone and having my iPhone talking straight through to my Cardo Intercom for my, my directions. I'm chatting with my friends, I'm listening to my music, that I just always tend to use my iPhone on my Peak Design mount for navigation instead of the actual system. But I have heard good things about the system. As far as a display to read riding along, it's really bright, obvious and easy to follow. I've put a little RAM mount on here for my DJI camera. The fairing gives you a pretty good wind buffer. There is a notable improvement on the wind buffering on the 1250 versus the 850. I think the 1250 just has a slightly bigger fairing. So you get a little bit less of the uh, wind nod on your head as you're riding along. I am still gonna tell you the massive flaw that this bike has. So stay tuned, we are getting close. SOS button, the SOS button is a very cool, unique, and I believe BMW are the first motorcycle brand to offer this on the bike. Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but I haven't heard of another bike having this. There is a big SOS button here. It's bright red and it's telling me to press it, but I'm going to refrain right now. And that is an emergency feature for if you desperately need help. When it comes to the electronics on these bikes, very cool is how quickly they're ready for action. You hit the ignition and you can start them almost immediately. And on some of the adventure bike, there's a bit of a delay while the bike wakes up, which is a bit annoying. So it's a big plus on the BMWs. So, right, what else do I need to say about these bikes? Now there's all the obvious things that both of these bikes, they've both got big sump plates and engine bars, all those kind of specs you can kind of read up and look. How do they feel? That is the bit that we've been waiting for, right? Clutch. Just gonna feel it. Feels good. So that's a hydraulic clutch. Oh, that's a mechanical clutch. Mechanical versus electronical clutch. That is a big difference on your riding fatigue. Now we do have a quick shift and that's gonna reduce your clutch use, but it has a hydraulic clutch anyway. But the weight of your clutch, if you're gonna be doing a lot of traffic, a lot of off-road where you're feathering using your clutch, bear in mind that the 850 is mechanical. So you're gonna need a lot stronger finger power. Okay, so when you're actually riding these two bikes, I would say on the 850, I felt underpowered on the road. I didn't have the same grunt to be over able to overtake. It felt harder to ride because it's not as comfortable. When you go into the corners, it doesn't feel as dynamic to go around the corners. It might be because the 1250 has additional rider mode settings, which are shifting all of the dynamics of the bike. It just wants to lean, it wants to turn, it wants to pull around the corners a lot more easily, smoothly. It's got a lot more riding comfort. It's got more power. Yes, it's heavier, but it's not a disadvantage. You've got the boxer engine. It doesn't fall over as much. It doesn't feel as heavy. What is the 850 doing? Because on paper, it's nowhere near as good. And when you ride it, my goodness, you can feel it's not as good. It's not as capable. And in some ways, I actually think it's harder to ride because it hasn't got those comforts. It doesn't ride as smoothly and as well. It's a, a great bike when you think, oh, I'll have something slightly smaller that won't be as intimidating. But I actually think this one is gonna be a lot more forgiving and enjoyable and help you learn through your riding career. Now, this is all talking about a road touring trip. Now, if we are starting to talk about going off road, maybe it would be a slightly different story because this is a very big bike to take off road. Okay, really important one is what do the bikes sound like? So I have two keys, they are both wireless fobs. So you get the key on there that enables you to lock your panniers and then you just need to have this on your person. But the engine sound 
is quite dramatically different between the Boxer and then the 850. So let's start them up. I've got the key in my pocket so it knows I'm here. I'm going to make sure it's in neutral so I don't lurch forwards. Um, and then I'm going to hit the button. And if you come in close, we're going to hear that engine sound. It's a little bit hairdryer like. It's not bad. But when you compare it directly to the 1250, you'll realise how much better it could sound. So let's start her up. I never put my bike in neutral. I feel like neutral is just totally pointless gear. So let's find neutral. There we go. And then start this big boy up. Oh, it's gorgeous. I love that noise. And when you're actually riding along, it gives you little like bumbles and grumbles and backfires and purry growl. I do like that sound. A really critical part of this whole story is the price tag. This is looking at more like £19,000. This is more like £12,000. That is a considerable 7K quick maths difference in a price tag. You're getting a lot more for your money, but you're paying a lot more money. You could have a lot of fun on an 850 and have seven grand to spend on fuel and hotels and bike kit. Like my pants. Everyone always asks what these pants are, so I should probably just put it in the video. They are men's pants by Moscow Moto. They're the woodsman and you'll have noticed that I live in them. I do wash them, don't worry, they don't stink, but they've got air vents and pockets for my phone. I do actually race in the desert in these. I do ADV in them. Uh, they've got space for my knee frames when I'm racing as well and I just find them really comfortable. Uh, so that's my pants. Everyone always asks, so I just thought I'd tell you. Um, I think it's time to tell you the massive flaw that both of these bikes have, but particularly the 1250. I'm actually unbelievably disappointed in the flaw that this bike has. I'm going to need to just get something, so stay there. It's a GS, right? GS BMW riders, they like coffee shops. You've got to go to coffee shops. You've got to go to Starbucks. That's what GS riders do, right? Being a little bit cheeky here. Where am I meant to put my coffee? There's no coffee cup holder anywhere. I messed around the gun on a bike. I hope this video has been a little bit interesting. I've given you a bit of perspective of the GS. Do I get it? I kind of do. The GS is a beautiful bike for road touring and I definitely get it. When it comes to off-road, I think there are some better options on the market, but for road touring with a little dabble, the 1250 is an absolutely incredible motorcycle. The big question is, is it the right bike for you? I can't tell you that answer. Get yourself down to a dealer. BMW have places you can ride their bikes all over the world. Go and get a saddle, get your bum in one, see how it feels. Does it light the soul of your fire? Fire of your soul? You know what I'm trying to say. I'm going to stop talking. I'm Vanessa Rack, the Gun on a Bike. Make sure you hit the tick, the bell, so that you get notifications of future videos. I'm going to go and get back on the bike and do some more riding. I'm probably going to get a coffee.